My name is Ken from Tyco. I'm uh, currently doing developers relations here. Um, today, I'll be conducting a workshop on how to deploy a decentralized application on Tyco with a subgraph. So, yeah, so this, this workshop is actually for um, developers who want to build a decentralized uh, application and also developers who have maybe some experience building decentralized applications but have not um, used the drop technology um, before. So a little bit about Tyco first. Tyco is a layer 2 ZK EVM. We are type 1 uh, ZK EVM, which means that we are Ethereum equivalent. Uh, and this allows us to utilize uh, the graph indexing technology. Right. So for today's uh, demonstration, we will be building an NFT uh, decentralized application using subgraphs. So at the end of this workshop, you'll be able to um, um, create an um, NFT minting um, so, who, so for anyone interested in following this workshop, you can scan this QR code or key in the URL to access these slides so that um, you can um, deploy the decentralized application. Next, um, I'll just talk about why why we should use the, the graph. So the graph is actually a decentralized protocol for indexing and querying blockchain data. And it makes it possible to query data that is usually difficult to query, query directly from the, the blockchain. So projects with complex smart contracts like Uniswap or like NF or, or OpenSea requires a lot of data. And this data, it will be really slow to carry all of these data from smart contracts directly. So the, the graph and subgraphs will actually help to speed up the query of these data and populate this data on, on your front end website. And okay, so how does the graph work? Um, first of all, we will start from the decentralized application, your front end where users will interact with your smart contracts. Um, when the user writes to your smart contract, for example, Mint and NFT, events will be fired by the smart contract and picked up by the graph node. This data is processed by the subgraph manifest and stored according to how you define the subgraph manifest. Uh, finally, this data can be accessed um, from your decentralized application through uh, GraphQL API. All right, so that's it for the introduction of Graph and uh, of, of the Graph. And so now we will uh, just go on to the live coding demonstration of how to build the NFT minting application. So, okay, first we will um, just clone the, the repository. So this, this repository here, Debs Labs, is um, uh, all-in-one mono repository where uh, users, um, like developers, can build full-stack um, decentralized applications. So next, first, okay, next after cloning the repository, we will set up the environment. So this installs all the project dependencies, uh, which includes Foundry, um, Svelte for the front end, and yeah, and just, just this. So now let's take a look at the folder structure. As mentioned, this repository, Depth Labs, is essentially a mono repository that contains the front end smart contracts and the subgraph uh, all in one. So the app folder contains the front end repository, 
uh, contract folders uh, contains the smart contracts and the subgraph folder contains the subgraph manifest. Um, yeah, so let's just go to the slide. So these files over here are essentially the more important files to take note of uh, for this workshop. Yeah, the, um, you only have to modify these files to, to follow this uh, tutorial. Okay. So next, we will actually create a new wallet to deploy our smart contracts. And then we will fund the ad this address with uh, some ETH from on, on the title page. Once the ETH is transferred, funded to the new to the deployer wallet, we can actually deploy the smart contracts, and we can do that by using this command. So this command um, deploys the smart contract, the NFT smart contract, um, to to the Tycho blockchain. So the smart contract has uh, just been deployed. Um, so next, we will have to copy the contract address and the block number into the subgraph manifest uh, to tell the, the graph node when, uh, which contract address to index uh, data from, and also from which block to start indexing data. So as you can see, I've just replaced the um, address and start block in the subgraph manifest. So after this, we can deploy the subgraph to the graph node. Access the subgraph um, through this GraphQL in, uh, playground um, to query the current owners of the NFTs from this particular collection that I have just deployed. So, if I were to query it right now, um, sorry, there should be oh, Let me deploy it again. I forgot to see. Yeah, but basically there should be nothing because it is a new contract and um, yeah, it is a new contract so there should be no data on this subgraph. Yeah, so there is um, currently no minted tokens as you can see here. And next we will actually run the front front-end application um, so that we can see the query in uh, query. Yeah. Right. 
So this is the front end application. Right now, as you can see, there is no NFTs minted into my NFT inventory. But uh, as soon as I mint the NFT, the inventory should update. So in under the hood, whenever you mint an NFT, there is a transfer event that is being fired, and this event is being indexed by the subgraph, and the owner or the recipient of the NFT will be logged inside the database, and when you query the database, it, it, will, it will return the current owners of the NFT. All right, so the transaction has gone through, and if we query the, the subgraph through this uh, interactive playground, we should be able to see the updated uh, owners of the of the NFT, All right? And if we refresh our front end, we should be able to see an updated uh, NFT inventory. All right, so yeah, that's a very simple demonstration of how you could deploy a uh, decentralized application on Tyco uh, and using Subgraph to query the uh, blockchain data. Um, yeah. So next, I, I guess I'll just talk about what other use cases you could use um, this for. Uh, you could use uh, the graph and what you could possibly deploy on Pico. So a lot of DeFi applications require a huge amount of data. For example, Uniswap, um, if you were to um, deploy, uh, if you were to add like liquidity, you, you, you will assume you will receive a lot of um, uh, LP positions, right? And these positions should be queried using the graph instead of directly from the directly from the um, from the smart contracts um, because it will take a lot of time. So in one query, you can actually see all of your Uniswap V3 positions instead of waiting uh, one R RPC call at a time. Um, yeah, uh, is, is there any questions from the crowd? Okay, thank you. Um, if, if anyone is interested in like deploying the, the app again, um, you can just access the repository from this QR code. Okay, thank you.